everyone, I'm here at Animanga 2018. I'm here with awesome voice actor Josh Grail. Hey, how's it going, guys? It's actually pronounced Greeley. Greeley, there hey, you go. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one. No, it's me. all good. I've been called Grail my whole life. It's totally cool. <laughs> so how are you doing? I'm great. It's been a, for a first year, this is a hell of a con. Yeah, this is the first year. Let me read it. Uh, yeah. uh, elaborate on that. This is the first year that Animanga has ever been here in the at States. All. Yep. yep. They're a long time Japanese convention, though, as far as I understand. Really? Yeah, I was yeah. not aware of that. Yeah, a long time Japanese convention. This is their attempt to come to the States. And if this weekend is any indication, it's probably going to be something very big in the future. Yes, that's what I seen. Actually, it started really, really nice. Yeah. 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 How are you doing with the LA weather? It's it's not nowhere near as bad as Texas weather. Oh, so I, I, I heard mean. someone say it's nowhere near Florida weather. I would agree with that too. Florida is like living inside of a dog's mouth. Oh god. It's like constant. Yeah, it's like constant. It's just it's one hundred. It's humid. It's one hundred percent humidity. Oh Jesus. In the hundred yeah. degrees. That's sticky. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. I mean, like here's the deal. It's the same as Houston. Oh, it's the yeah. same as like living in Houston, yeah, Texas, you know because another... Houston is on the water and everything. Right. So it's like 112 degrees Fahrenheit in the summer on top of 100% humidity. So you just walk outside and immediately you feel Start, like, like, yeah, you're it's... You're walking on yeah. hell. It's like... <laughs> All right, right. Um, so let's get started, shall we? Yeah. So tell me a bit about yourself and how you began your career. Uh, well, I mean, I, I, I loved cartoons from before I could talk. Disney Afternoon, uh, the Steven Spielberg cartoons growing up, like Animaniacs and Hysteria, Gargoyles, uh, and and everything for the, oh uh, yeah, any DuckTales, Rescue Rangers, Darkwing Duck, and Tailspin, that whole, hey, that, you know, that whole crew, everything. And and when I was when I was about five years old, I, I, I got into theater, and I, st I started doing children's theater and stage and all that stuff, and learning acting from a very early age. Uh, and by the time I was eight years old, I already knew, well, I want to be an actor, but I also love cartoons. So let's let's marry those two loves, and Use so yeah. Together. So I knew from the time I was around eight or nine that I wanted to be a voice actor, um, and here I am now. It, it, it's it's I, I was very fortunate growing up in Texas that uh, Funimation and ADV Films, were, you know, were just in the same state as me, and uh, I reached out to them, and that's how I started the career. And I've been doing it. That was in 2004. That I got my first my first gig, and now I've been doing it professionally for 14 and a half years. 200 shows, over 300 characters. Amazing. Uh, yeah. Speaking about uh, your first gig, who was the very first character you you you? you uh, the put? very first gig that I ever had was bit parts for a show called Wedding Peach. It was a, yeah, 2004 anime. I was the third volume, like the second or third episode. It was a college student that buys a cursed ticket to a soccer game and becomes a zombie. <laughs> Leave it to anime. That's exactly, anime. yeah. That's anime for so you. So it was just like, That's anime. I knew what to, I mean, I, by that point, I'd been an anime fan for uh, six or seven years. So Probably more, so I knew what to expect. Yeah, I knew what to expect, and so I, and I think the fact that the, uh, that I did that nothing threw me off, and, and and that I was just able to perform it as if it was like I believe all of this is real. So like they were just like that sounds great, and they kept using me. They just kept bringing me back. And this, so. this is this was with the ADB films. ADB right? films, yeah. Let me let me explain that ADB films is unfortunately no longer in uh, yeah. in, in service. No yeah, longer, they're no they're now Sentai Filmworks. Filmworks. That is correct. And uh, yeah, they're they're. The majority of the original ADV folks that you know that ran it are all gone, so it, it's kind it, it of a scale. It, it hurts a lot. Yeah, they they were like too. ADV and Funimation were what made my my what solidified my anime fandom. Like that, those were once I discovered anime my, by myself. I didn't have cable in my small hometown. So I could only get VHS and DVDs oh, to get to VHS. watch anime and stuff. So like I would go to Sam Goody and blow like three months worth of of uh, of uh, my part-time job money uh, onto yeah allowance part-time job whatever it was at the, you know at the time on every anime VHS or DVD that looked interesting and like it was almost it was always either like ADV films discotheque uh, 
uh, square software sculptors or Funimation, right. and uh, when they all were still really small and starting out and everything, and like, it, it ADV and Funimation were the ones that really broke the mold in terms of always producing dubs of quality. Yeah, high and quality. Yes. Very yes. high quality, high quality <laughs> actors, high quality writing, everything, and the mix engine, the mixing and everything, and the matching the mouth flaps. It was just, it was revolutionary. And to the fact that they're gone now, it's it's still very heartbreaking. Yes. I was there when they, uh, the actually the, the show that they lost that really started the downward spiral I was the lead of at the time. Uh, it was Gurren Oh my God. I was really? Simon. Why? Uh, yeah, it, it, ADV it, it, was the first pe was the first company to bring Gurren Lagann over to the states. Right, and then it and was dubbed over with uh, Bandai Entertainment, mm -hmm. right? Yep, yes. Bandai. Yeah. So oh, like, Bandai. yeah, Bandai and stuff. We, the, we did the first five episodes, and then the company that had helped us buy everything for the past for the past four years decided they didn't want to work with us anymore. So they took everything and they sold all the titles to everybody else, and then ADV went bankrupt. Right. Yeah. So I mean, it destroyed them overnight. Uh, and let me but, add to that, that, uh, that when you said that ADV Films not only produ produced a lot of high quality content, yeah. but also uh, there, there was, a, a, was a starting point for many voice actors out there. Yeah. I know a lot of people, uh, Tiffany Grant, who is also based off in Texas, yeah. she started uh, as a script writer or editor, if I'm not correct, if I'm uh -huh. correct. And then she began slowly going into the voiceover uh -huh. of doing She characters. was the first anime voiceover actress ever hired in the state of Texas. Right. As the in, first. Right. And of course, everyone knows Tiffany Grant from yep. being Asuka in... Um, Evangelion. Evangelion, And yes. tons and tons and tons yes, of other things. Yes, yes. Um, but uh, yeah, that was... It, it, it was definitely heartbreaking when, when, they, when they folded and everything. And I wish that they were still, you know... They're not necessarily a shadow of their former glory or anything like that anymore, but they're still doing, they're still producing, they're still kind of in the game. They're a, but, they're a small crew right. now, but uh, they're still around. They're still ADB, doing the, you know actually anyone else who would be familiarized with ADB films, actually. Every time I mention ADB films, I'd be like... Most people don't know what that yeah, is. Yeah, so it is. It's, it's just, it's yeah, like, it is very heartbreaking. Yeah, I have a, a friend who is a, a voice actress who started in uh, ADB films, and uh -huh. uh, her name is... Uh, Kira Vincent Davis. Kira's one. Yeah, Kira's great. I love Kira. <laughs> no way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's a good friend. I, really? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> I love Kira. She's Kira's so ridiculous. I did several today. shows with Kira. Which shows do you care about? Wallflower. To um, the uh, 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 Narama Daikon Brothers. Uh, we were in uh, Full Metal Panic. Uh, um, were you in with her uh, in a show called uh, Uta Watarinoma? Yeah, I was one of the villains. Or AKA uh, Underwater, Underwater Ray Romano. Romano. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I was in. Yeah. Tell me about that. Uh huh. Yeah, I did. that was that was one of my first uh, villain roles. That was one of my first named villain right. roles. Right. Yeah, you were. Um, if I'm not mistaken, you were that one. Like, yeah, the prince, dog ears. Prince with... who was obsessed with Carla. Yep. Right? Yep. There you go. And you, I, and you recognize that picture from yeah. your behind the scenes uh, voice actors uh, uh -huh. profile thing. I saw that picture from Lisa Wetherspoon, and I was uh -huh. like, Huh? Is that yeah. that one dude? That's that was me. <laughs> um. Yeah, dude. I mean, like, I mean, and there was a Coyote Ragtime show. Uh, uh, Magicano. Were you in uh, with that the food cons? Yeah. No, no, I wasn't in the food cons, but I was in Fistful of Fuku. Oh, okay. yeah, and I yeah, remember yeah. Uh, Kira telling me about the food cons. The food cons was ridiculous. And, uh, yeah, because this is this mannequin kind of. Yeah. I don't want to say it's anime, but yeah. it's a show from it from Japan, yeah. and so it's kind of yeah. kind of creepy ish. <laughs> yeah, it was ridiculous. Yeah, <laughs> well, a lot it's of an fun honor stuff. To meet, someone, to, to, to meet a former ADB film voice actor. It's, yeah, well, just so, I mean, fan ADB fan. Like they like I wanted to work with them, and like that said, they gave me my start. They gave me they they gave me my my opportunity to do this. Well, like and, I said, and, ADB films. If you guys don't know what ADB films, go search it. Especially if you're a huge anime fan and want to break into the voice acting industry, go ahead and check out ADB Find films. Find out. Find out about their legacy. You will not be disappointed. Yeah. It is. It is. It is what. Bang Jib Entertainment is nowadays. Yes. Definitely. Let me move on by saying uh, you worked in high school DXD, right? At Issei. Yes, I correct? took over the role of starting in the second, in the third season. Third duo to the present, correct? Yes. So, yeah. So the me, last third seasons three and four so far, I'm right, Issei. Right. So let me, what is your opinion on, on this harem anime that's, that's constantly there? What is, I mean, <laughs> I've been in no less than probably 15 harem shows in my career. Most of them, I'm the lead male. Uh, so, like, I mean, I, again, uh, I started, like, one of my first lead roles 
was in kind of a harem show. It was uh, Taishi and Comic Party Revolution. Wow! Um, wait, no way. You were you were from yeah Comic for Party. Not the first season, the second season. Oh, so, so, okay, yeah. yeah. Liam yeah. O'Brien was Taishi for the first season. Okay. And then ADV got it, and then I was uh, Taishi for the second Did season. Did you work with um, what is her name? And, um, Lisa, None of oh, the geez. original. No, 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 I wish I had. She's okay. one of my favorites. Yeah, I know. She's I one mean, of my all-time favorites. Yeah, I looked up to her as Amy Rose in Sonic X. Slayers. I look up to yes, her for Lena Inverse, yes. dude. Lena Inverse is the best character. If you have never seen Slayers, but you are a fan of Fairy Tale, Slayers was the '90s Fairy Tale, and Fairy Tale actually borrows a lot from Slayers. Check it out. It's one of the best. And it's still ongoing, from what I hear. Mm. Right? I mean, sure. it kind it's of, it just way. kind of comes back around every yeah. five or ten years, and they add something new to it. But yeah, it's uh, it's it's three to me, three seasons, several great movies and OVAs, and a lot of great comic books and everything else like that. I didn't like the last season that they did. So it, I know we're, we were digressing from the topic. So yeah, let's yeah. go back to the harem, yeah, 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 the harem thing. So what is your opinion on that? On DXD, oh, right. it's DXD in general. I have no issues with it, uh, except for like. What I, the, 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 whenever I do have an issue with a harem show or any sort of anime, it's generally because of representing underage characters. Un yeah, yes. underage females and also, and, and just sometimes like, with DXD, it's different because I, when the care, like when all the, because the female characters have all the power. And, and, and like, Issei's just an idiot. <laughs> like, I mean, he's he's a well-meaning, very more, like he has his morals, he's well-meaning and he, he he obviously loves Rias, he loves all the girls, and he is a good person. Like, he's, and I, I, I do love the fact that uh, Issei is also different from a lot of other harem protagonists in that he doesn't play stupid. Like Akihisa, because Aki, Aki just kind of is just like, oh, hi, Himiji, and, and me to me, and everything else like that. It's just like, uh, he never admits, he understands that they like him, he just plays dumb. Or, even worse, the characters that literally are dumb, that just never realize it. Or they do the whole thing, it's like, no, I am attracted to you, but I can't because I respect you too much. It's just like, you're full, you're so full of crap. Like, Issei is just the stereotypical horny teenager and he is a blast to play for that reason. Um, and the story itself doesn't, they don't use the fan service as a crutch like a lot of shows do. Okay, yeah. A lot of shows would be like, we're gonna make this fun show and it's harem, like harem show or whatever and it's not funny. There's nothing but like we're gonna go they're like yeah, by all it's, this. yeah it's yeah. It, it, it's yeah. just like they 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 use they use boobs and everything as kind of like a a uh, a band aid for the fact that a lot of their scripts are just not funny or original or, or really entertaining at all. It's just it's it's tits for tits sake, <laughs> and, and, and so, but DXD. There is a story. There is an overarching story, and all of the characters have their own uh, reasons for being there, their own backstories, their own pains and, and, and fears and everything that inspires them to continue on and as they get stronger and as they grow together as, as a unit and ultimately as a family. And like, it, it's, it, it has elements of sitcom, very well written comedy, very well fleshed out characters, um, and 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 it's very obvious that you know the the original mangaka and and the people that are adapting it to an anime are very like they understand those characters and their motives and their backstories right, yeah, very really very well. Right? Yes, the, and and and, 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 the and they're obviously very connected with the human conditions, which is why I think they're able to make those characters feel so realistic and make them like because you actually do sympathize with them and you actually are rooting for them and you're waiting to see what new thing they're going to learn how they're going to overcome the next thing there's so many harem shows where it's just like it's just boobs and that's it there's nothing more to it Which is and and i'm like and that's fine for a while like I, I don't mind watching a show like that. I'm just gonna turn my brain off and and just like if if you just want to show me gravity defying, sparkly, bouncy boobies that defy all the laws of nature for if like 30 minutes, I'm fine to watch that. It's funny, but it's not an entire series. I love your honesty because that's just, my problem with a lot yes. of parents, which is why I stopped watching parents because I just I, I just see a series and I uh, as soon as I learn it's a hand, I'm just, yeah. same story, same thing. Yeah, it's yeah. It's gonna end this way. And, and here's yeah. And here's the deal. 
when I was a t when I was 13, 14 years old, and I was buying harem anime behind my parents' back or whatever, it's just like I didn't care. I didn't care if the story was crap. I didn't even know if there was a crap what a crap story really was back then. So like I was just I was just like oh it's cartoons and there's boobs. Got like your anime. yeah exactly. So like I mean like I get it, but uh, like now and and really as a creative person. It really infuriates me when people are just lazy. And, and you in the industry, of course, so you yeah. know more about those script writers. Yeah. Than, yes. Yes. Of all the characters you voice, who is your favorite? I don't have one favorite. I can't pick one. If you could choose. I can't. <laughs> I'm not picking one. Uh, I have five, and that list changes as I discover new characters that either mean something to me personally or they, they represent a milestone in my career or something like that. So right now, the list is. Uh, Kenichi, the Mice Disciple. Second place is a tie between Princess Jellyfish and Devil's a Part Timer. Then Armin Arlert, Yuri Kotsky, Grand Minister. The Grand Minister is my latest he's Grand Priest from Dragon Ball Super. For the dub, he's the Grand Minister. Um, the Grand Minister is my latest one to the list, and that's why he's he's currently my top pick because Dragon Ball is what solidified my anime fandom as a kid. It's and and movie. yeah, and I started on. I mean, like that and Sailor Moon and Slayers were the ones that really were just like, okay, I'm I'm all in now. It was it was really insane uh, to now be a part of that show that changed my life. And, and and not only am I a part of it, I'm stronger than Goku. <laughs> like, I'm stronger than his whole damn species. So like, yeah, it's just it's so good. I know you mentioned Yuri right now. Yeah, yeah. And going to that, what would you experience working on Yuri and Ice as? The character Yuri. I did not expect it to be what it was. Like I did not expect it to be this groundbreaking, stereotype breaking, mold breaking, original th that th just that was that would be so important. As aside from you know all the you know you know my own personal views on it, it's an amazing sports show. That's also an amazing story about the power of love either if it's through a very loving friendship or or through a or, or through a loving relationship or or uh, or a sexual relationship or anything like that you know it's you know love is love um, it was the best and only version uh, of a show that i've ever seen that treated a male and male relationship with respect yeah, they treat it like any other relationship because that's all homosexual relationships are. It's just there's two people of the same gender. That's where the differences stop. It's it's still a relationship between two people, a, 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 a dedicating relationship. And and like the thing with Yuri and Victor, and it's like I can't speak for the creator. I don't know 100% if it's even canon that they are together. To me, they are. To I me, think the other pictures of it. Yeah, the yeah, another depiction of the ring. Yeah, the same. Yes, like yeah, yeah. very very synonymous. So, right. You know things there. Um, I think they were just purposely put there so you could just, if, if, if they yeah. mind, if they're together, okay. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, that whole mind, thing. Right. And some yes. people are just like, you know, and people, you know, make the argument that no, they were just friendship rings or promise rings or something along the same way. I don't agree with them. But again, it's, this is still up to interp personal interpretation. So I can't say you're wrong. I, it's just, I don't think that that's correct. I think that it is supposed to legitimize, like legitimately represent a proposal. A promise of I, I I'm committing myself to this relationship, whether that is a loving sexual relationship or the relationship between a coach and his student. That's also up to interpretation. But the important thing overall is that the entire thing about this story was about a young artist who failed miserably at his art and decided that he was no no good at it. He wasn't worth it. He didn't have the talent, and he lost all love for the art and all love for himself as a result of it. And it took the love of someone he looked up to and learning what real love actually was for him to find that inspiration for his art again. Like, and, and like, that's the story to me. Uh, and, and really, as an actor, playing Yuri was very cathartic and very therapeutic because I, I've been there. I've, anybody out there, if you draw, write, crochet, act, whatever, if, you, if that is your art, how often have you ever felt, why am I trying? 
why am I even doing this? I, I'm no good. Like, there's so many people that are better than me at it. Why even bother trying? Whatever. That's Yuri. That's Yuri. That's who he is in the first five minutes of the first episode. And that's the, that is the thing he has to overcome. And we get to, to getting to go on that journey with him and seeing and experiencing emotionally feeling like the, the love for himself that he starts to feel as a result of everything that happens was one of the most uplifting experiences of my career. Like, because I, I had my own experiences, you know, overcoming that fear and those thoughts, but not like that, nothing as positive as, as what Yuri went through. And so the fact that I got to relive those feelings again through him, was was cathartic as hell. It was so therapeutic. Like I, I was able, in a way, to kind of come con to terms with my own pain from those experiences. And and, like, and it's and I, th I I think that's why so many people, why this show appeals to so many people from so many different walks of life is because Yuri is so damn relatable. And of course, the situation in which she's in. Of course, yeah. you said he is yeah. this person who feels like he's failed at life, failed at his not only at life, but it failed at his own passion. Or, yeah, and his passion. And yet it took it took the love of someone to regain that faith he had. Yeah, himself. yeah. I know you have a huge line for your audience. Yeah. Yet, so let's finish up this book. And are there any other uh, current projects that you're currently working on that you can talk about? Well, we just started the, the third season of Attack on Titan. It'll be on Toonami, I believe, later this month. It's currently August for those watching. Um, so uh, yeah, be, be sure to check that out. I'm also uh, uh, I'm recording Dragon Ball Super at the moment as the Grand Minister. We're uh, just have to get to the the dub is about to get to the uh, the the Tournament of Power arc. So for those of you that have been waiting uh, for the dub part of that, it's here. It's time. It's finally so, here, folks. Uh, <laughs> other than that, nothing else I could talk about. You got India. Other than that, um. Uh, follow me on you can follow me on Twitter uh, just at Josh Greeley uh, and also I do have one other thing that I'm working on a new project I'm actually starting my own production studio uh, I want to create my own content so I want to like my passion yeah voiceovers and stuff yeah. or stuff like that so uh, be on the lookout watch my Twitter as well for that uh, any video games are you currently working on? Uh, no video games I'm working on right now no so to finish off our interviews you know what time it is yes that's right you guys it's time for uh, voiceovers again and all right so I'm gonna throw you three characters, see if you can do it. Alright, Issei. I'm a, I'm a delightful perv, the grabbing dragon. Yuri. Pork cutlet balls? Did I actually say that? I wanna crawl under a rock and die! Ginonza. Keep your psychopaths clear. Give me another one. Uh, Tokiyami from My Hero Academia. Revelry in the dark, my friends. Revelry in the dark. Right, Dark Shadow. That's right. I love revelry. From Doc and Test? Yes. Hideyoshi's my waifu. <laughs> I'll never be your donut! <laughs> <It's> so, so <laughs> <laughs> thank you so Absolutely. much. Absolutely. Thank on. you. That's thank a lot so of fun. Much. Thank you guys so much. <laughs>